it edits, you know, as long as it's something they're really uh, interested in and it's relevant, they'll sit there and they'll watch the whole thing over and over again. So these are some of the things that we're finding out with this. So they'll, they'll actually read something like this if it pertains, you know, to them. Uh, in step six, we have uh, paint a perfect picture of what life would be like, you know, if they use your product. So we kind of go into that a little bit. We, we painted a word picture in a sense. And I just met Tom Hopkins actually on Monday, the famous Tom Hopkins, the great sales pro. And he was talking about word pictures too. And that's what we want to do. It's one of the sales processes is that you actually want to paint a perfect picture of what it would be like for your prospect to be using your services. You want to get them visually using it, mentally, put them in a mental picture of using it. And that's very powerful because I've always kind of said, Joe, that it was kind of like taking, uh, stealing the keys from someone's imagination and taking it for a joyride. <laughs> and, and that was like, you know, pretty hardcore, but that's what we talk about here in a hardcore marketing uh, hour. So uh, it's pretty cool stuff. And the next thing we want to do is we want to sell. You know, step seven was to sell the product, sell the benefits, sell the features. And of course, for every feature that you have, you should always beef it up with like, you know, um, multiple benefits, you know, for yeah. every feature. This was one area that, for some reason, it's like my mind is blocked. Okay. Even though I know how to sell what I know. And for me, it's, as an attorney, I'm a state planning attorney, and I've done, you know, handled other legal matters. But whatever your business is, you know what you know. Right. But really sit down and go through and sell it to someone else. Write that down. Most most business owners, unfortunately, have like two or three things. Yeah. But there's techniques in here, and I, I don't think we want to give them all away. Right. That, that and if you notice, you're at step seven. You've gone from one to seven, one to six, and you haven't sold anything yet. So you got yeah. them interested. What is it that they're <laughs> going to possibly buy from you? Because mm -hmm. they're already set. So if, if you come up flat on number seven, you're, uh, you know, you're, you probably wasted a lot of time. That's true. So you may have to, you know, you may have to revamp that, and some of the web analytics stuff that, that you perform for your yeah. clients are, are going to be able to tell you, okay, where'd they stop? Or they stopped there because you had a weak offer. Um, so it's something to definitely think about. Think outside of your industry. Definitely go outside of it. Talk to the experts who are doing this for a living. And obviously, Ted's the uh, web guru and private coach, and uh, among other things. He's right. You want to sell. You want to sell what you have at that point. You kind of are kind of building up all the suspense and all of this great momentum because you want people to you know buy something eventually, and that's what's coming you know coming down to. So that's a very critical point because we're just building up credibility up to this point. And I think uh, and of course of step eight, which is kind of a really critical factor too, is to have people sell it for you. And that's what Dan Kennedy even says. He says you know let let people say it for you if you can. Mm -hmm. And so we want to get testimonials in there. And for a lot of companies, if you're brand new, it's tough to get testimonials because um, you're a very new company and people haven't tried your services yet. So what I always recommend for people is to um, get, get an opinion <laughs> of your services or tell them or, or, or find someone with credibility of, of, your, um, of your marketplace and let them mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, what do you think of this stuff? And then they'll tell you and you can use them for a testimonial that way. Clout goes a long way. And um, so testimonials are really, really important. And in fact, it, it was a really interesting point. There was a, there was a guy who was selling uh, um, um, some sort of coaching services. And what he would do, for whenever he got a lead, what he'd just take an envelope, reach inside of a shoebox of all these testimonials and just stuff them in there with an order <laughs> form and send it out. <laughs> and I think we all want to be at that point. We all want to be at that place. It'd be a very comfortable place to be. Yeah. Uh, and step number nine is the guarantee. You want to talk a little bit about the guarantee? What you have? Yeah. One, you know, you you always want to give. You want to look like that. You are going to give more than what they even paid. <laughs> um, more times than not, you aren't going to lose money on it. Everyone's not going to return it unless you have a bad product, unless you've defrauded someone. Um, but. We're dealing with, and I, I talked to one of my uh, my inner circle members earlier about how we as business owners are are perceived because we're dealing with consumers. You walk into Walmart, you walk, you go to McDonald's, you go to all these, you know, um, all these other service service places also, 
and, and you see, and they all have guarantees. You bring it back with a receipt and you get you know, a full refund. Uh, Myers, I know, one of the big grocery chains in, in this area, uh, you used to be able to bring in if they had a mistake and you get two times the amount if they had a mistake. So that's their guarantee. So you got to make sure that your guarantee is, is uh, ironclad, as I like Ted's words. Um, it's got to be an uh, ironclad guarantee. Um, and you want to make sure that you're, in my opinion, personable with whoever the reader is for your um, story here. What, what about the extension on, on how long the guarantees are? What's your time limit? What, what's well, your thoughts on that? On mine, I, I personally put, um, you know, I've gone between 30 and 60 days. I know some on some products that are sold, it can get up to 90 days. I think realistically, if it's past 30 days, most people are, you know, actually, if it's past two days, <laughs> it's either they like it or they don't. So right. you're going to know. But, you know, you may find, you know, maybe a couple percentages that if it's the further out, someone might say, well, I want to return it now. Yeah. And they've gotten the full benefit of it. Yeah. Um, so You know you know what I like to do? I like to go for a year. A year? Wow. Yeah. I do, I do a year. I do 110% money back. Wow. Up to a year. Because I know my stuff is good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're gonna, tremendous. And at some point they're going to use it <laughs> yeah. you know and uh, it's going to be hard for them to, to say well you know I didn't get a whole lot of results out of it well you used it for a year and you were number six on Yahoo what do you, or you're on a second page of Google <laughs> obviously you used it <laughs> so um, and that's the thing so what I do is different with the, the industry but the whole mentality is uh, not be afraid to give 110% I always like to um, uh, over deliver mm-hmm. on my stuff just over deliver you know, uh, not to get rid of them, but but to really uh, satisfy the client and also um, to uh, it's a lot of cushion. One of the yeah. other things that they, I think kind of relates to everything that gets put into something like this into the into your sales copy is it makes you rethink and retool yourself. And one of the I think one of the one of the seventh principle of uh, Dr. Kobe is sharpening the saw, mm-hmm. and that's what you're doing here. At a minimum, it's not just <laughs> something you know of. Uh, you know, a fruitless effort that you're just doing on a Sunday. You're actually sharpening your saw. You're, you're, you, you should be out there looking at what your competitor. I, I took many time, well, you know, for, for years, but really focused on looking at my competitors, how, how different, how I wanted to separate myself. I want to become that purple cow like Seth Godin talks about and how many others talk about. So yeah, that's what you're doing here. That's, you know, if we had to sum it up in one shot, you're sharpening your saw because you want to pinpoint who you're working with and be able to, as, as, as you talk about, you want to cherry pick yeah. the people you really want to work with. <laughs> I use that a lot, but it's true. It, it, you know, picking the kind of people you want to work with is very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, too, I think, um, you know, with talking about bonuses, because bonuses and guarantee kind of go hand in hand. And I like to give them sometimes two or three bonuses at the very, very end. Uh, and and uh, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a physical thing, although it can be. Um, depending on what kind of bonuses you have. And a lot of times people will buy things strictly, or even like an information product, just strictly for the bonuses.